What's buzzing with Barca right now? Today we will talk about the win against Celta, Sergio Dest, the Champions League draw, Dembélé, Griezmann, the next match against Sevilla, and much, much more. Marco, Ethan and Kai will join us after the intro, but in the meantime, feel free to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Let's go! Hey guys, welcome to the Buzzing with Barca podcast. Today we have Ethan and Kai, also known as El Juego del Posicion. Um, we will start with the first topic, the Celta match. Um, as we all know, last night uh, Barca won 3-0 with 10 people, 10 players, um, against uh, Celta in the Balaidos, uh, which is a stadium that uh, Barca historically has a tough time inside. So... Uh, what can we do now but uh, start and talking? Uh, we will start with you, Ethan. What did you think about the game? Very impressive. Um, I think of Arsa two or three years ago under Setien or under Valverde. As soon as they would have got down to 10 men, their morale and their confidence would have slumped. But I think under Coleman, it didn't really, nothing really changed. In fact, I saw. After his his very smart substitution, in my opinion, where he took off, I think, was it Griezmann for Araujo? I don't know. I still saw it was almost like Barca hadn't had lost anything. They were still dominating. The pace, the intensity was act, um, was there. They scored two goals with 10 men, which is quite impressive, especially considering the weather and the stadium. As you said before, they haven't won there in five years. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very impressed overall, I thought. Um, when they got down to 10 men, I thought, oh no, here we go again. Barcelona were going to to lose quality. They were going to lose confidence, morale. But no, I'm, I was very impressed on how they reacted. The Celta Vigo game was quite special in a sense. First, we got a red card. And we've seen that fighting intensity going throughout the, throughout the game. Uh, especially, surprisingly, in the second half, where we usually are weak. But uh, our own substitute for Griezmann was perfect. Unfortunately, I have to say, I disagree with men on the pressing. The pressing is far from on point because it's often, you know, just going on the player and not on the zone. As a consequence, we leave a lot of zones out, which means that eventually, if we fail to enclose the, the press player, we might end up continue a counter which for me is not acceptable. You can do it against it itself or a weaker gladiator, but you cannot do it against a really strong side like Sevilla, Bayern or Liverpool. It's just not uh, viable, whether it's just from, you know, an open side or close side, you cannot do that. So for me, that's the biggest problem. And secondly, We've only had three players really shining this day, which was Frankie Coutinho and arguably, you could say it at some point for Bert as well, but that was it. You don't, for now, it doesn't seem to me like a really optimized to our squad strength. I totally agree with you. Uh, what I did notice yesterday is the, the pressing play, the, the tactics of yeah. uh, Kuman. Which we, um, we, I was very impressed with the, the the work rate with the players. I saw Messi doing a lot of uh, pressing. It's something that we're not used to see, right? Yeah, it's all no, especially for Messi. And uh, Ansu Fati was uh, again the the big man on the show. Yeah, he's he's brilliant form. Uh, two games, uh, three goals so far. I think yeah, it's going very well for him. But I'm. Um, 
I don't want to put a lot of like pressure on him because, as you said, he's on, he's very young. He's only about what seventeen years of age, and obviously, yeah, right now, yet, yeah, right now, what he needs is um, to be calm, to not get too too um, big headed. Obviously, obviously, he won't. But and I want and for the coolest to not put as much pressure on him because just because a player starts well doesn't mean he's going to be like this whole season. So far, he's doing very well, and I really do hope he keeps it up. But we need to call for calm and, and patience from the Barca fans, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. And uh, what did you think about Coutinho? He was very impressive. Yeah, um, he. I think he hit the post during the match, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he, he played very yeah. well um, as well. He was defending, he was attacking, a lot of open spaces, a lot of good plays created, I think, because he's actually playing his proper position under Coman and wasn't really used properly. And um, Valverde and yeah, under Valverde, I think that's why yeah. that's why he has all this freedom and he, we are showing the this this new revitalized Galdino because he's actually been using in a position that he feels comfortable with, and Coleman trusts him. Coleman always speaks highly of him in press conferences, in questions, and I think this is giving uh, the player more and more confidence. So yeah, I'm quite happy to see how he's playing. The next topic is the. A Champions League draw. Um, yesterday, yeah, uh, we were uh, we were drawn into Group G with uh, Juventus, uh, Dynamo Kiev, and Ferenc Varos. Hopefully, I'm uh, pronouncing it uh, rightly. Uh, if not, uh, Hannah will kill me. But uh, <laughs> hopefully, I'm doing a, a good job. Um, so, I mean, we uh, the the. <laughs> Ronaldo versus Messi, oh. the old story here. So, uh, what did you think about the draw, Ethan? Well, to be honest, my on my honest reaction is I think we could have got much worse. Um, considering the teams we could have gone against by Munich, Liverpool, Manchester, um, no, sorry, by Munich, Liverpool, PSG. Although Juventus, don't get me wrong, are a brilliant club. In my opinion, they're not as strong as the others. So I'm I was pretty content with um with the draw and considering that Juventus recently over the last few years it was it's been happening to Barca as well they've they're not the same team that they used to be especially last year they yeah. they they for example they've never really progressed to the semis like they used to or the finals have always been going out quarter finals in the in the Serie A they've been losing more match uh, more matches than usual so yeah I'm I'm quite happy with the draw um for as for the other two teams I know that Dinamo Kiev are a uh, very good team. I don't really know much about. Um, I don't know really how to pronounce it, but I'll just say um, the other team, the Hungarian it. team. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, in my opinion, I think we could have gotten much worse, and it's going to be amazing to find these to see for at least probably the last time another match which has Messi yeah. and Ronaldo in the in the in the same game. Yeah, maybe the last times. Um... What I thought about the draw as well, that in uh, tier three and four of the draw, we could have gone uh, with uh, teams like uh, Leipzig, Leipzig yeah. like uh, Atalanta, like mentioned Gladbach in the fourth tier. So uh, we, I totally, totally agree that uh, we could have gone uh, much, much worse. And um, frankly, I'm pretty happy with the with the draw. Mm -hmm. Uh, hopefully, we will see we will see us uh, finishing in the first place. Yeah, hopefully. Um... Now we're going to the topic of the USL draw. For me, we've had a pretty good draw. We're getting one team that took away with Kiev, but should be fine. Uh, French Cox, which is also probably pretty easy, and then you have Juventus, which is colossal because. At the back of the league, we saw them offer, and of course, this an obvious miss. Now, the question is how will we do? Because uh, we don't know what Juventus we're getting since Pirlo has just started implementing ideas, but I do expect them to probably be quite defensive. Because obviously, Ju uh, Juve away is going to be very yeah. hard, especially for the like defensive uh, type of aspect. But I'm pretty sure at least if we don't win or get at least we could try and get a draw or obviously go for the win but if we don't get a draw but i'm pretty confident back at the camp now uh we should we should win because uh as i said yeah juve are strong and um yeah it's not only uh, messi ronaldo as well it's also arthur pijanic and dejong versus delit who's obviously 
Last yeah. year, the league was um, highly linked to a move to Barcelona, and Barcelona had offered yeah. money, and ultimately, he, at the end, he chose uh, Juve. So it's gonna, it's a uh, yeah, it's gonna be a bit, a bit special that match. And of course, Arthur and Pjanic. Yeah, Arthur and Pjanic. Yeah. After the, this uh, this weird deal between uh, Barca and Juve, yeah, uh, it will be interesting to see Arthur in the Camp Nou and Pjanic in uh, Turin. Um, yeah, it, it adds to the in- interesting uh, stories around uh, this clash between uh, Barca and uh, Juventus. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm also interested to see how they are welcomed because I think UEFA released a statement yesterday that they will allow. 30% of home fans to actually go and watch these matches. So, honestly, I hope yeah. for when Arthur comes to Camp Nou that he's received in open arms because, obviously, he didn't really decide to leave Barcelona. We all know he wanted really to stay so and he was too. kind of forced out of the team. So, I hope we don't boo yeah. him or disrespect him because he still probably supports Barcelona. He'll always be a Catalan, uh, like a supporter of this team. But, yeah, I hope he... I think that the, the fans... The fans uh... Did like yeah, him? I think did. that they yeah. still do. Yeah, and um, I think that the camp no will give him a, a warm welcome when he arrives. And um, yeah, it's refreshing to see fans back in the stadiums. It's only thirty percent, but it's better than this uh, computer voices yeah. of uh, FIFA. Yeah, obviously. For- Okay, moving on to the next topic. Uh, Dest finally arrives. Uh, Serginio Dest, the right back from Ajax, moves to Barca. What we all wanted, what we all waited for. Uh, it's finally here. Mm-hmm. Um, Ethan, what did you think about it? Well, it was a very tense few weeks because there were conflicting reports all the time. Obviously, the reports saying he was uh, imminent to join Bayern Munich then Hours later, it would say he was, no, he's close to Barcelona. And then hours later, he'd say, no, he's signed with Bayern. So it was a very tense couple of weeks. But when I saw that, um, obviously, when most reliable journalists finally confirmed that he was closer to Barca, and obviously when he finally signed, it was... Was it, uh, was, it was it uh, Oriol Dominic, yeah? Oriol, was the first yeah, one. He was the first one yet to break the news. A contrary as well to yeah. all the other reporters who had said, no, he is closer to Bayern. So obviously, when yeah. the first report came out, when by Oriol, I know although I know he's very reliable, I thought, hmm, take it with a pinch of salt because he's really the only journalist saying it. But yeah, as soon as like Fabrizio Romano and Moises Jorens and all of them started saying that the uh, negotiations are very advanced, I got a sigh of relief. But obviously, I wasn't relieved till everything was signed because you never know what can happen in a transfer. Um, sure. But yeah, I'm very happy with it. Uh, he's a very good player, what I've seen. He's very good going forward. Um, well, did you actually see him play? Well, I've I, not I, live. No, like I knew who he was. I never mm. seen him, but I've seen like compilations on YouTube. Yeah, it, it seems to me like we're happy hyping this uh, young player who is, of course, talented. Uh, I haven't seen much of him, so uh, I try to calm myself and say, "Well, he's just 19 years old. He's very young. Uh, it probably means that the first right back uh, this season will be Sergio Roberto." Uh, Dest arriving is probably one of the best things in this transfer window. We never expected the beginning to see Rakitic fit the all out and get in Dest. Because, let's face it, even with some other direct cause was a huge problem in the sense that you cannot uh, expect us to be a top team again without a, a proper right back, especially uh, when we used to have a 4 3 Messi, a right winger who was not a right winger, and still now under Kuman, it's surely for confusion, but we're seeing a huge lack of playing the right wing as we now left things in death, intentionally getting someone who actually is technical, because I'm sorry, Alba is not technical, is young, so has a lot of development, and especially can bring you that width, can bring that depth, can bring you that creativity that you need to should play from the right wing. And this is for me the most important. Yes, he's defense every week. But what you have to remember is he's very young. He's not gonna expose himself perhaps directly, uh, even if many expect because Porter uh, is hated by many. But what you're gonna get is a long-term investment and most probably Adaptation time, but it will be worth it. And to get him, we should be proud. At least for me, that's the game. 
So um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to not uh, hype myself with uh, with Serginho Dest. However, uh, seeing videos of him and trying to see him for like 15 minutes in the last uh, Ajax match, um, you can see that he is a very fast player. Yeah, very, very fast. Yeah. He knows how to play the, the Juego de Exposición. And um, he can add to us. But uh, it will take time. I mean, fans will not uh, fall in love with him in day one. Of course. Uh, he will do mistakes. He's very young. It will take time for him. Th- that's what I'm trying to say to fans. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, I see loads of fans or- or- already comparing him to the likes of like Dani Alves. And I think that's very bad because yeah. you need to let, he's very young. You need to let him create his own profile, uh, get, um, get used to the system, adapt to the Barca, the Barcelona style of play. But, as soon as he landed, like one of the reporters actually said, "Are you the new Danny Alves? Like, how can, you can't put so much pressure on such a young kid?" Yeah, he's very young. Him and uh, we will talk about Eri Garcia the, in the next topic. But uh, we are getting very young players, uh, which is uh, which are uh, Serginho Dest, yeah. Trincao, Pedri. Yeah. They are very young. It will take time for them, and we as fans must be patient. Exactly. Yeah. That's why, like, not not every player, not every player is the answer Fati, yeah. Of course, yeah. And as you say, look, we've we've trial and tested the last few years. Um, we've we've gotten players that we thought were going to be very good, and unfortunately, it hasn't worked out. Look, in the case of Usman Dembele, for example, everyone thought yeah. he would be the new Neymar, he would be the new Neymar, and look. Moving on to the next topic, uh, now Garcia should he arrive now? Or should he arrive in one year when his uh, contract finishes? Uh, Ethan, let's start with you. Uh, okay, so um, depending really if he should arrive now, it depends really how much Manchester City are asking, in my opinion. If City will eventually let him leave for about 10 to 15 million or 15 to 20, then I think we should get him now because obviously he already knows the Barcelona style of play coming from La Masia. So I think he, he would have yeah. less problems than other players to adapt. Obviously, he's Spanish as well, so he would get used to the conditions, the weather very quickly. But if City are demanding about £30 million for him, I think the smart thing for Barca to do is just wait, maybe keep Todibo and use Araujo more this year and just wait till next year and get him for free. Yeah, the big transfer was, of course, Eric Garcia. Not the big in terms of how much it costs, but what to represent. Just like this, he's very young. And contrary to actually to Dest, Garcia actually knows our club. He was at La Masia and he signed him now with Pep. Yes, he's not the best defensively, but at least you're getting a long-term replacement. Now, of course, the question is in now only 2021. For me, if we're not heading to the it's fine. In 2021, on the condition that we're sure we're getting him in 2021. Because uh, I think he's... He'll cost nothing, lots of clubs will go on him and obviously we cannot allow that. We cannot let such a gem go, not especially if we can for free. You, you can just pressure Manchester City slowly and then eventually sign him for almost nothing either in December, January where they will be forced to or simply wait until his contract expires. This is for me, it's fine if we don't get him this season. It's just a plus, and I hope we'll get him. Yeah, I think that uh, both Manchester City and uh, Barcelona, they, they know that uh, Eric Garcia should move to Barca right now. Uh, it's a win-win for uh, both sides. I mean, uh, Manchester City won't, don't have place for him as they got uh, new uh, centre-backs, mm-hmm. and um, they need money. I mean, they, they would be happy to have money. So uh, they they don't want to lose him for free in a year. So it's better for them and for Barca as well because Barca would like a fourth uh, center back. And having a Pique, Langlais and the Araujo, mm-hmm. Araujo is not uh, really exactly. enough because uh, I see that, uh, that Kuman don't want uh, Umtiti and he doesn't want uh, Toribo as well. So um, I think that... Uh, it is necessary to bring another defender. And uh, yeah, Eric Garcia also, like Serginho Dest, is very young. He's, he's about to play bad matches as, matches as well. Uh, I saw people on Twitter, uh, uh, Manchester City and Barca fans, uh, they, they, don't, they saw uh, the last uh, 
mediocre match of uh, Eric Garcia when uh, Manchester City conceded five goals. And uh, we heard people saying, why should we get him and why do we need him? Well, uh, let me remind everybody, Piquet didn't do well on Manchester exactly. as well before he arrived. But he knows the style of play. He played in La Masia. So uh, I can see the potential of him becoming a, a defender for the next decade of Barca. He's not coming to be here uh, to be the, the first center back in the starting lineup right away. But he can do a good transition with exactly, Piquet, yeah. who is getting older and, uh, <laughs> and he's not getting no. quicker <laughs> as time goes by. So um, I think it will be the best solution for all if uh, both Manchester City and Barca will just uh, negotiate and come to a reasonable uh, fee of, uh, like, like you said, uh, 10 to 15 million euros. Um, and it's a win-win situation for all sides. Uh, hopefully that what will happen. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. According to, obviously, what's happening now, I think Barcelona are quite optimistic because they know that City have a lot of players in their team and they need to sell. Especially after these new defenders um, and that plus as well, they don't wouldn't like in the like situation. They wouldn't want to lose Eric Garcia for free. So I think it's working into Barcelona's favor so far because they know that not only are City they've got a lot of players in the squad, but they haven't really sold many players this year. And I think eventually, in my opinion, I think City will eventually cave in and just say, "All right, look, we'll give him to you in the last couple of days." I think so. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, it works out and we get him this year. And as you said, we shouldn't expect him to be a starter. He should kind of blend his way into the team as Piquet blends his way out of the team. He's 34 years. I think Piquet's 33, 34. It's time to look for new centre-backs. And of course, Piquet... So, moving on to the next topic, uh, the current situation in the vote of no, no confidence. The vote of no confidence may be the biggest thing. Because, essentially, it doesn't matter who you bring. You can bring this Garcia, literally the whole best 11 in the world. It will not be now. Because this functional management will always either force players out or mistreat them. And we won't need of the to happen. Especially not if you're so against Mexican club. Or more than a club in English. For me, what you have to do is, you clearly, you, we clearly have to vote them as early as as possible because even if say Dorfman goes on our way we will still get probably not before December any elections and it's actually way too late already and every second it gets worse so for me the problem is you can see Bartomir right now slowing the process uh, and validating a few votes etc for the simple reason of he doesn't want to. he doesn't want to be if I'm not wrong, the first president of our whole history to actually be voted on. Yes, some were closely like Laporta and Nunez, but it's ultimately Bartomeu who gets the definite kick officially. And this would be huge. What do you think? Yeah, I agree 100%. <laughs> I think the sooner the better. Um, I think um, with the amount of votes that we have, I think the cutoff was 16.5, but we managed to get 20.3 or something if i was the president and the board i'd be very worried now because over 4k votes past the uh, the 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 minimum re required uh yeah i would be very worried but um personally what i think if it gets validated i think bartomeo will resign um within the next couple of weeks but the problem is if he resigns himself i don't think it would make a difference because the board i think would be the same right yeah, if he resigns himself, then uh, the board, Jordi Cardoner and uh, his uh, friends, uh, will stay as the as the management until uh, the elections or until the vote of no That's confidence true, yeah. will force them to go the, to wipe them out all the board. But uh, it will take some time. I don't see the whole board resigning uh, just now. They they don't want to do it because if they leave tomorrow. Then the next board will uh, we are, are capable of uh, suing yeah. them and uh, wanting the money because uh, they, they leave the the club in a very bad, bad financial very bad. way. Uh, 
I mean, I, I mean, the status of the club is so bad that we don't even have the 15 mil- millions for uh, Eric Garcia. I mean, one year ago, for buying Griezmann, they took a loan from the bank, and uh, now they they try to pay all the all the loans and the the. They have a lot of expenditure and the biggest salary in the world, and um, they got themselves into a bad, bad situation. Yeah, this the state um, of the, Barcelona to be probably, arguably, the one of the biggest, arguably one of the biggest clubs in the world, or the biggest club in the world, to be so like poor in terms of that. It's actually it just shows how much this management has really screwed up the whole economic situation uh, looking back uh, speaking about Arthur again for example the only reason the Arthur deal went through is simply to balance the books it's yeah. it's yeah. simply that reason and that just shows how bad this the economic situation is we're basically forcing players out of the team because we don't have money so and, and obviously now that all the players are on a wage cut as well and I, and there's rumors that they're going to yeah. even be asked to further cut their wages if I'm right so yeah, they want to cut the wages of the players, uh, and the way that uh, they forced out uh, Vidal yeah, well. and uh, Suarez, and uh, now they are they, they really want uh, Todibo out. Todibo out is not because of uh, sportsmanship reasons. He wants them out because they want to make a exactly, profit. Yeah. They signed him for one million, and they want to sell him for fifteen to eighteen million. So it will show. Um, a profit in the yeah, books. Exactly. It's the only reason that I want to sell Exactly, it. yeah. And, um, yeah, that's why I think maybe I think the fans are had enough. We've had enough. I had enough of Bartomeu personally after we lost 4-0 sure. to Roma. I already thought, OK, this president or... Obviously, everyone blamed Valverde back then, but I think you have to look at the bigger picture. I don't think Valverde was really allowed to play how he wanted to because, obviously, due to constraints in the club, but... I've wanted him out since then, and I'm really hopeful that this... Uh, obviously, it's going to be very hard. Cause... Moving on to the next uh, topic. We were talking about Griezmann. Yesterday, Griezmann uh, left the field in the 45th minutes uh, after uh, the sending off of uh, Clement Lenglet. Uh, but yesterday, and against VRL, we see that he... He fails to fit in the in the Kuman system as well as they, he did with the Setien and with the Valverde, and uh, people are are trying to lose patience with him. Yeah, I completely agree. I think we're right, definitely. I think we've had a lot of patience with Griezmann, to be fair, because he's been here. What well, this is his second official year at Barca. Okay, yeah, it's only second year, but every time he like doesn't underperforms. I don't. Of of course, you always have those Barca fans that are that on Twitter and that hammer him. But generally, I think we've had quite a, a lot of patience um, with him. If we wanted to, by now, we would have started looking for options because at this time, with Dembele um, last year, uh, he had been, what, roughly the same time and he was underperforming and we were kind of like trying to look for a way out for him. But I think even the club trusts Griezmann. I think they still do trust Griezmann. But yeah, he's he's just looking lost. He, he doesn't feel comfortable. He loses a lot of possession, makes a lot of really bad passes in my opinion doesn't really bring the ball forward he's almost like scared to attack because every time you see him running yeah. into space he always turns back and passes it to Messi or passes it to someone else and obviously the Griezmann and the goal would obviously have those plays where he'd have individual brilliance so I don't know what I don't actually know what the factor is maybe as you said he doesn't fit in the system but it's not just this system he hasn't fit in the last two previous manager systems as well so maybe he's lacking confidence or Maybe the expectation is so high for him there, he's just feeling the pressure and he can't perform how he, how he wants to. When it comes to Griezmann, I really have to say it's uncertainty. The, word. the, the key word is uncertainty because you don't know what's going to happen with him. Most of us, including myself, expected him to do better. Yes, he's in Messi's position. Yes, he's not a winger. But ultimately, you'd expect better. Because we know he has this sort of intelligence, this sort of adaptability we expected. And the problem is it didn't come. On the left wing it didn't work, and on the right wing I expected him to interchange with Freela and therefore do well, but it didn't happen either. So, now, what now? Continuing his strength, 
he's actually readapting to our system. Uh, Grisman, you basically don't see him at all. You, you literally wonder whether he actually has played. Now he's staying, doing a few off the ball runs. That's not, that's not the price you should pay for off the ball runs at uh, 120 million. This is not how it's supposed to be. And it doesn't seem like there's a real solution. I mean, it looks like a lack of confidence. Yes. Uh, he does uh, look like uh, his confidence is very low. But I mean, this is almost 30 years player. Um, I mean, the guy is a world champion with the, with the France. Um, you don't expect a guy like him to have a confidence um, all, no. problem. I mean, but we did see it. We did see it with uh, players like uh, Thierry Henry back then. He was also a world champion. He arrived to Barca, and he didn't do well. As he, he did bad in this first year. But then under uh, Pep Guardiola, uh, he, he found his place. Yeah. Hopefully, we will see it with Griezmann as well. Although it it, it looks bad right now. I, I really hope that he will do better. Um, but right now it doesn't look so good. No, yeah, I completely agree. I'm, I'm, I don't see the same Griezmann that I used to. And, and honestly, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if if he does doesn't perform this year. That June they'll be trying to find an, an exit for him because I think, as you said, Barca fans are getting impatient with him. We're trying to do everything to try and we even uh, even Messi. Well, no, I think uh, sorry, um, Kuman substituted Ansu Fati in the Villarreal game just in order to give Griezmann more confidence. And yet, he still hasn't really... I don't know, obviously, he's a very... Uh, I like Griezmann, so I I agree with you. I hope he does. He he gets better. I think that the only reason that the, that the club didn't sell him this summer, it, because uh, selling him right now, it's me admitting the failure of the board in, uh, in buying him for so much money. Um, so... I think this is the only reason that he's here. Mm. I mean, the guy, the guy earns the second uh, most, uh, the second biggest um, salary in the club. So he has to perform as in, and he has to do it fast. Yeah. Now we will move to the next topic. Uh, we will talk about Dembélé. Is he about to leave the club? According to the recent rumors, um, Manchester United are pushing for him. Um, Manchester themselves, United themselves, they wanted to get Jadon Sancho from uh, Dortmund, but uh, this deal is stuck. So they are trying to to get uh, Dembélé, and uh, right now it seems like um, Manchester United want to loan him, and both Dembélé and Barca want to. Uh, we, we will on. They will only consider uh, uh, selling him on a permanent deal, but they will not consider loaning. Uh, however, in my opinion, um, uh, considering the media bias against Dembélé, considering the the last days when we hear about him late to the training, which was not true, and then uh, we hear about him um, considering his options, I think that it's leading towards a similar deal to Arthur, that, where he didn't want to leave, and then little by little... Um, the media and the board uh, succeeded in convincing him mm -hmm. and uh, he might leave. He might leave in the next few days. Hopefully, personally, uh, I would still give him the, this year, this season to prove himself, but um, it looks like it's heading towards a, a loan with, with obligation to buy or a permanent. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say that. I think this is a very resembles a lot the Arthur situation. Obviously, Arthur was very vocal and wanted to stay, and they sold him. Um, I think Barcelona right now, currently at this time, and Manchester United are trying to convince Dembélé so hard to leave that I think eventually his head will be turned. He's looking... I think there was a report today by Miguel Rico saying that uh, Dembélé doesn't see going to United with bad eyes anymore. He's now evaluating the pros and cons of leaving the club. Um, personally, I think obviously this goes back to the economic situation of Barcelona. Dembele is on huge wages as well, so yeah. by yeah. loaning him, not only will Barcelona, Barcelona um, ha will relieve their, their their his wage because United, I think, would be paying for his wages in the loan, 
But as you say, Barcelona and Kuman want Depay. So they'll probably use that money. Obviously, they won't still have money to buy Depay, but it'll be much easier because they'll save a lot of money in terms of Dembele's um, wages. Um, but yeah. yeah, I'm on the other hand, I think Dembele leaving Barca wouldn't be as bad because obviously we've given him, I think Barcelona have given him many chances, but he just keeps on. And I agree there's definitely a media uh, agenda against him, especially recently, because I think that's a tactic for th- them to, to pressure him to leave. But um, he's not, he hasn't performed how he's a, a bit like Griezmann. He hasn't performed how he want to. Obviously, he has matches where he's very good, but he's very injury prone as well. Uh, a lot of the time he spends out, and he's still getting a lot of money even when he's not playing. Um, so yeah, yeah, I wouldn't see it with bad eyes him leaving, but I think the way that they're forcing him to leave is very is not is very bad. But I wouldn't. I'm not surprised by the sport anymore. Yeah, honestly, um, regarding the. It's, uh... He's injury prone um I, I wrote an article about him like uh, two years ago I, I used my knowledge as a personal trainer from a few years ago um, and I talked about these hamstrings I mean this is a, a very delicate situation because um, hamstring injuries tendency to hamstring injuries it's uh, oftenly uh, uh, so, uh, this is the uh, it happening with with uh, bad trainings and without personal um let's say program and proper program for a player uh, we saw that with Messi mm. as well when he was young Messi was had very was very very injury prone in the in the first years of uh, of his uh, career even uh, he, he missed the finals in 20, 20 um, in 2006 um, because uh, he was in- yeah, and, but then came Pep, and he, he gave him a proper and personal program, and he, he actually was there to to save his career. I mean, Messi was not Messi. He was if he was uh, missing a lot of matches because of injuries. Uh-huh. And uh, talking about talent, talent, raw talent, uh, Dembele is the second most talented player in uh, Barcelona, in my opinion. And uh, I think that he, as well as uh, De Jong last uh, season, and Griezmann, De Jong and Griezmann are a player who never uh, missed games because of uh, injuries. And last year, they both missed like a month uh, each. <laughs> Moving on to the next uh, topic, Rafinha, Todibo, Titi, And in general, uh, the players that uh, might live in the last uh, few days of the transfer window. Um, in my opinion, I would keep Todibo. But I think that uh, the board sees uh, dollar bills uh, instead exactly. of his face when they look at him. And uh, but uh, Rafinha and Umtiti and uh, Mateus Fernandez as well um, are quite stuck right now. And uh, I, hopefully they won't uh, stay and be uh, um, out of the plans of Kumans as well. Um, let's see what will happen in the next uh, few days. Uh, what do you think? It- yeah, I I agree with you 100%. I think we should keep Dolibo because I don't I've never like really he hasn't been given many opportunities like at all. So I don't know why they, why I actually read a, a comment on Twitter yesterday it's like why is most Barca fans so adamant in kicking out Dolibo because he's literally he can't even prove himself in the club. As you said, they don't even see him for the player he is. They just see him because of how much money he costs. Um on the other hand for Diti I'd sell him because I just think He's very in. He's again. He's had a problem like Dembele. He's probably as well due to the technical area in that aspect. But he's, he's yeah. He's and there's. I think in this first couple of years he was very good. He was a very good defender for Barcelona. But recently he's. I don't know. He's he. Ever since he got that big injury, he hasn't been the same since then. He's not playing. Um, yeah. So I think for the club he's he's a burden. But the thing is, we can't really find yeah. a suitable suitable. Uh, club to actually afford his wages because again, Umtiti is on very big wages. So I think Barca won't end up selling Umtiti because no team really wants him. Leon wants him, but Leon can't afford him. As for Rafinha as well, yeah. I think the only chance we could have sold Rafinha was if we included him in the Manchester City operation. But City don't don't want Rafinha, so I'm pretty sure he'll probably end up staying as well. Rafinha, Tudibo, Umtiti, there are cases of players. Well. Some of them you don't really know what to do because, well, once it is clear, you will want to sell him, but nobody can pay his contract. 
and it's literally virtually impossible to get him to get him back on the track. And the problem is what you're gonna do with Rafini because he's essentially a very good player. He has proven it. The problem is injuries. And at that point, with all new position getting filled in, where does it get in? Is getting any play, play time? I really doubt so. So for me, I, as much as I love him, I think we have to sell him. The question is now, uh, who would take him? But I definitely do think he's a quality player, he's a great squad player, but he won't be a starter. And right now, when we need cash, I think we unfortunately do have to sell him. I mean, they gave Rafinha a price tag of 16 million euros and uh, the team that wanted him uh, won't pay that much. Exactly. Um, honestly, I would uh, sell Rafinha even for uh, 5 million. I mean, the guy, he, he, he is worth a lot more. But yeah, actually, he's a very good player. I mean, without the injuries that he suffered, uh, he could have been a great rotational player. But right now, there's no room for him. I would sell him for a uh, small money. Smaller money than 16, sure. But um, it, it's simply because he renewed his contract for the next year, just for one year, so that he could be loaned out uh, last season to Celta and that uh, Barca could uh, get a little money for him this summer. So I wouldn't give him such a high price tag. I would sell him the guys in the last year of his contract. Uh, it's only reasonable. And as for Umtiti, uh, yeah, let's talk about Umtiti first and then Todibo. Um, as for Umtiti, uh, I loved him in the in the first two yeah, years of him good, in uh, Barca. Uh, he was like the new Puyol yeah. for me. But uh, then he, actually, really similar to Puyol. Puyol just got it in the in an older age. But uh, Umtiti was injured and didn't treat his injury at time and it got worse. And uh, right now, like you said, it's like a burden on, on the Barca um, wage limit. Um, but it seems like we're stuck with him. Uh, I think that eventually no team will take him this year and uh, we will uh, we will have to let him uh, be in the squad. I don't know how much he will play. Depends on his uh, fitness. But I don't see... Hopefully, I, I really hope that I'm wrong. But I think that he's uh, elite... Club's career is over. Mm. And as for Todibo in the last second that we have, uh, I was impressed with him, but there was not enough time for us to see exactly, him yeah. because he didn't play uh, so much, so many mm. games. Moving on to the next topic, uh, we're approaching uh, Sevilla. In two days, uh, Sevilla are coming to the Camp Nou, uh, one of the biggest games. I mean, the, this is a very tough uh, opponent. And uh, they are actually they, they are the only team that has a perfect uh, record so far. So it will be a match between two clubs with perfect records, and uh, it will be a very tough game. Uh, it might also be the, the debut of uh, Serginho Dest. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty excited about this match. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm, as you said, I'm excited about the date, the possible debut of Dest. Um, I'm also excited as well because. Rakitic is going to come back to the camp now. He's been doing very well for Sevilla yeah. in the last couple of days. Um, and yeah, I saw Sevilla against Bayern Munich and the way they played, I was very impressed. In fact, they, in my opinion, if, they, if Noya hadn't had made that last minute save, I think Sevilla would have won. Um, they played very well. They were very yeah. organised. They created chances. Of course, you're, you're Bayern dominated, but Bayern are just right now in my opinion, just a different team to everyone else because of how uh, the quality that they have. But um, I think for a team like Sevilla, to not really, they're not really used to. Okay, yeah, they're, they're, they've won the Europa League many times, but they're still not really used to the big, 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 like stages, right? The big uh, leagues um, in terms of like yeah. uh, going really deep into the Champions League. But to play against Bayern Munich like that, I was very, it was very positive signs, and I think it's going to be very, a very tough task. I reckon we'll still win, but it's it's going to be much harder. So that's why I, I keep on insisting that Coleman's first real test is on Sunday against Sevilla. And and yeah, they're there. They're a very good team. I'm quite happy to see how they're doing. Approaching Sevilla will be very important because firstly, it's Coleman's biggest test ever. He hasn't faced such a good 
yes, they will be without love. Let me give what you say. Most probably a huge blow to them. But what you have to remember is severe and no easy side. They are not easy because they can equally play very closed or play very open. They do have as well in in the wings very dangerous players and what we don't have a very cohesive team. So for me, this will show what Kuman will do. Kuman will probably go with the same starting eleven, and that wouldn't surprise me. And the question is, will we able to beat them? How will we be able to beat them? That's the question. Because in Kuman's intensity and so forth, we often lose the ball, and against Sevilla, you cannot do it. You just can't. So the question is. How will we able to go? So that's for me. Would you start with, uh, I mean, Busquets? We didn't talk about him. Oh, he was yeah. very good yesterday. He, he ran the yeah. most for uh, for Barca yesterday. Um, would you start with him or would you give uh, Pjanic a chance against Sevilla? Uh, I think probably very likely Busquets will start because I think Coman's a manager who, if the team is going is doing well, why change it? So that's yeah. what he did yeah. with with um, Celta. He most of the players, I think, was was still the same. He said he wasn't going to do many rotations. I think what I like best about Kuman is because obviously it's a very intense. It's going to be a very intense match versus Sevilla. So I see Busquets playing at least maybe fifty or sixty minutes and then getting subbed. So obviously he doesn't get tired because he's constantly yeah. running. So I think that's what's going to happen the next match because Busquets play. I think if Busquets hadn't had done well, Bianic would have started versus um, Sevilla, but. Because I think he played well last match, Kuman will probably go into the match thinking, "Look, we're going to start Busquets again, and we'll, you very likely play second half." Yeah, sure. He won't play another ninety minutes. I mean, uh, considering how much he ran yesterday, and then uh, the, the match is in two days from now. Um, I see him play like, uh, like you said, about uh, sixty minutes. And uh, will you start with Griezmann another time, or will you give? Uh, a chance for Trincao or Dembélé. Personally, I'd start. I wouldn't start with Griezmann. No, um, I'd give my front four would be Trincao on the right, Messi in the. Uh, no, sorry, how was? Um, yeah, uh, the front four. I'd be probably Messi in the center, Ansu Fati on the right, um, Trincao on the left, and um, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting a bit mixed up because no, I can't. No I'm, way I'm getting the positions wrong because I can't get the lineup mad. But yeah, anyway, generally I wouldn't start uh, Griezmann. No, I think we should give Trincao a, a more time because so far what we've seen on him is a very good player. He's very skillful. He yeah. he had an impact when he came on Villarreal. He nearly scored, and I think he he's going to be good for Barcelona. So I wouldn't uh, uh, start Griezmann no for the next match. Uh, moving on to the match predictions. I mean, for me, uh, I, I will let you start. Um, what do you think will happen in the game? Now, coming to the match predictions, I think we're heading towards a 2 2 draw where we've maybe, through some luck or deservedly, uh, had two goals and then we lost in the second half where Sevilla will catch us. This is for me what we're going to see. But uh, I do believe if they do not prove to be strong because Lopez Lop- won't be there, we might win 2 1 or 3 2. But for me, it's definitely a very close match. But it depends a lot of Sevilla because the psychological fact we will play a lot. I think we'll keep control of the game. It'll be very uh, uh, um, intense. Uh, we'll keep the ball. I think we'll score. Um, definitely. I think Sevilla have the very high chance of scoring as well because, as you said, We've always had a shaky defense. Yesterday, despite how good we were, there were you could evidently see problems in the defense. Um, especially now with them getting not playing, Araujo's not really used to playing these big type of matches. So I think Sevilla are going to be looking to exploit that area quite a lot. Um, I think, yeah, I think we'll end up winning maybe three one, but I, yeah, I think it's going to be a good game. Yeah, I think so too. I mean. Uh, considering the last message, uh, mess- the last matches uh, between uh, Barca and Sevilla, uh, Barca usually win the matches. Yeah. I mean, uh, the last game in Sevilla, we finished in uh, 
zero zero draw and uh, um we we can uh, remember like two years ago like uh, we we lost against Sevilla in the Copa del Rey uh two now but again it was in Sevilla usually in the camp no Barca wins and wins yeah. big um, but as you said um the form of Sevilla is uh, very very good right now I mean they are like us they play two matches and They won both matches and they are coming in the very high spirit uh, coach Lopetegui in the camp no uh, always reminds me of the 5-1 win against uh, Real Madrid and I I can still uh, I think that he still uh, it still haunts him at night because uh, sometimes uh, I mean uh, I mean after this match he was fired from Real Madrid um, but still he In two days we are facing Sevilla who are coming to the game uh, very very tough it will be very very tough um, for me personally I see us winning the mate the match uh, but it won't be an easy no, easy no. game I mean um, I mean most of the times there are there are many uh, goals in the matches between Barca and Sevilla uh, so I think I will expect um, something like three to me win for Three two win will be reasonable I mean not a very high um, difference but uh, still lots of goals um, our defense didn't concede until now but uh, I think that it will be harder against Sevilla um, let's see what happened yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it um, as I said I think it's going to be three one but I completely agree with you I think there'll definitely be goals in the match because yeah our defense is a bit shaky and I So we have a very good attacking line so we will see um, I'm looking forward to the match all right moving on to last words um, the personal monologue of everyone who participates in this uh, podcast uh, Ethan what did you want to talk uh, about so I just want to briefly mention about the Coleman effect so um, so just in January I um, I just want to speak about Coleman's impact that he's had on this club. I think so far, Coleman has shown the manager that many uh, coolers and people have claimed him to be. Uh, what I liked about Coleman is that he very clearly speaks his mind in interviews, like, for example, why he didn't use them ballet, because he thought the uh, Trincao and, and uh, Pedri are better defensively. Um, he also makes the right substitutions at the right time. He motivates the team. He makes them run, he makes the very pacey, very intense, disciplines them, and he also makes them train as double as hard in training, um, which I think is very good. The intensity in training is a massive factor because it gets players used to, to playing in that way. Um, I think so far, he is on the right track uh, with these two very impressive po- uh, performances. Um, but under Coleman, um, something's changed, I think. Uh, He's, this team looks revitalized everything looks very good obviously he's an ex Barcelona player that's probably in the minds of the Barcelona fans as well and the Barcelona players because they know that he knows the philosophy of the club um he very had very close links with Joe and Griff so yeah I think he's doing very well but as I said again it's very early to judge so, so overall so quickly he's only had two impressive performances who knows what could happen in the in the in the beginning or the end um of the season. And finally, the last my topic, of course, is the bucket of the Gipuch. This is the outrage that every Kule goes through. And it is, why? Por que? Warum? Pourquoi? Nobody knows what, what's going on. Why would... Conan says that, well, okay, here's good in you. I get that. The problem is, why would you then give them Chipekadi and not the Gipuch? The Gipuch has proven himself. He has played with City against Atletico Madrid, which is uh, against all the rooms of blah, blah, blah physicality because he blew that away by going through from his part, etc. The question is, why would he do that? Why would he say, yes, uh, he's going to have to fight? Why does Pedro get more time? Why? There is no end. None told me, oh, he doesn't fit in. Yes, his best position would be. I think it's genius, but he can equally play well in the double pivot. I, there's no uh, explanation why, unless I, there's something we don't know in training. That's the only solution for me. So, what I wanted to talk about is uh, 
the current situation of Coutinho, Philippe Coutinho. When Philippe Coutinho arrived two years ago to Barcelona, he arrived, he emerged as the next Andres Iniesta. He came as the best, uh, maybe the best uh, number 10 uh, outside of the Messi world. And uh, he arrived to Barcelona as the most expensive transfer in Barca's history. But um, Valverde failed to use him. So I would like to thank everybody who participated. Um, thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Kai. No worries. Um, I had a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. we will see you and hear you in the next uh, episode. Thank right. you and Forza Barca. Forza Barca. See you soon. See you soon. That's it for now. Thank you, Kai, Ethan, and Marco for your words. What did you think about the video? Write your opinions in the comment section. And don't forget to help us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. In the meantime, take care and see you soon in our next episode.